Hello everybody, it's SOD Mad Haven here today and we're going to be taking a look at the Type 62, the Chinese Tier 7 light tank. This light tank was introduced in the game quite some time ago. I do not know the exact date or the exact year. It's just been in the game for a really long time and I feel like it needs to have a little bit of an honorable mention because this thing is a very sturdy light tank. You may not have a lot of armor, but you have enough to get the job done and help you move. Now, first things first, I want to give my personal opinion on this tank. I was going around recently and got in love with light tanks for whatever reason. And the Type 62 was one of those tanks that I looked at and I thought about, but I never really went after it. So I started off with the T92, the Agel, and the LT432. So far, I've three marked the LT432 and I've two marked the other two. So the Falcon and the Agel. Now, the Type 61, I usually don't play a lot of Tier 7s, but whenever I do and I'm stuck with a random platoon or if I'm just playing by myself and I want to have a little bit of a fun match, decent mobility, decent top speed, really good concealment stacked on top of that, 390 base view range by the way, in Tier 7. A lot of Tier 7s, they're lucky to even hit 370 to 360 view range, which means you have a massive advantage in Tier 7 with this tank. Now, let's go ahead and dive right into the engine here. Starting off, you have 430 total horsepower. Your power to weight is 20.48. 20.48 is not exactly the highest, but it's up there. Now, 60 top speed. Keep in mind, Tier 7. Nice mobility. 23 reverse, 12% fire chance. That 12% fire chance is just fantastic. Now, a lot of these statistics are going to be a tad bit off due to the true vision test that is right now going on, and plus one, minus one. So if you take a look at the bottom right, at concealment, it is 0.58. It is actually not 0.58. It is around 0.29 to 0.28 originally. Now, the gun with this tank at 5.5 second reload time for base reload, your aiming time at 2.3, gun dispersion values at 3.7, well, sorry about that, not 3.7, 0.37. If it was 0.37, I don't think you could hit the broad side of a barn. Now, <laughs> accuracy on the moving tank at 3.11. Now, snapshotting inside this tank, you don't want to try and take long-range snapshots. Never. Mid-range, if you want to try and risk it, you do have a pretty decent amount of ammunition loaded. But most of the time, you just want to try and stay close for snapshotting so you can focus on mobility. By the way, just a heads up, whenever you are facing a light tank and you are in a circle deathmatch, never auto-lock. You always want to lead your shot by half a tank. That is because of the delay time from the server, and usually your shots will make contact as long as they don't go high or low. Now, 20 degrees of elevation with this gun. Pretty good amount of elevation. However, the gun depression at 5 degrees, not the greatest. However, your top speed at 60, power to weight, remember this, you're going to be able to get into positions that you want to get to, plus your light tank. You're made to spot. You are not made to be the frontal assault. Now, the tracks on this tank have 54 degrees of rotational speed, and look at those fantastic numbers. I love light tanks just because they are snappy. We have 0.5 on hard, 0.6 on medium, and 1.3 on soft. Now, I did not mention this with the T92, but terrain resistance, count that as a percentage towards your power to weight ratio along with your traverse speed. At 0.5, you actually have a 50% increase to your rotational speed, but there are diminishing in returns. So in fact, rather than 54 degrees, you could probably be looking around 90 degrees of rotational speed on hard land. And at 0.6, you could probably be looking at about 80 to 70 rotational speed. Now the turret on this, as I said before, the 390 view range, that is your biggest advantage inside this tank. 48 degrees of turret rotational speed. Jumping over to radio. I've mentioned radio before, that is primarily assist damage, however this tank has 145 less compared to most. Still, not too bad. Jumping over to the ammunition here, your standard rounds actually have 145 penetration, your premium rounds have over 220, your high explosives have 43. I don't load a lot of high explosives in this, as you can see, there are none, and that is because of the reload that I can get down to about 4.5 to 4.6. Or is it 4.98? I don't run a gun rammer. I think if you have a gun rammer, it's 4.5 to 4.6. But, last but not least, your crew, you have a driver, commander, loader, and gunner. Now, the armor. This actually has armor. 
You have 45, which at very specific angles can auto ricochet and sometimes give you the upper hand against tier 5s. 40, going further down, your hatches are at 40. Depending on the angle that they are shot at, they will ricochet. Your top plate at 35, this is a really big part about this tank. 35 millimeters cannot be overmatched by a 90 millimeter. Anything below a 90 millimeter or a 105 millimeter will actually bounce off that front plate if you are angled correctly. So if you try popping over a ridge line to get a couple of scouting shots, or just trying to get spotting in general, that top plate's capable of ricocheting a shell. Don't rely on it though, you are in a light tank. Now, I do have a replay for you today. Um, I am not one for profanity, but the person we gave away a tank to enjoyed the match a little bit too much from the comments he posted. However, I think that they were well-deserved and well-timed. If there's anything I can say about them, they made me laugh. Now, El Haloof. I had two matches that I could have choose from today. I had a E75 and the Type 62. Today we're going to be doing the Type 62 because the E75 is something we're going to go over later. Now, I remember mentioning Camouflage. Your overall spotting range, I feel like I mispronounced the actual boundary. So if you take a look at the front there, you have a cone, it's blue. You have your white icon, which is where you're looking exactly. That is your entire spotting range. Now, as you can see from where I am sitting, you know what, let's actually jump back a tad bit and then pause. So if you take a look, we are sitting at H34, directly center in that line. And we can see all the way out to the 7 8, just barely short, maybe 5 meters. Now, each one of these panels are worth 100 meters across, which means that whenever you go corner to corner, they are possibly 150. So, 150, 300, 500. No, I, I did my math wrong. They're 100 meters across, which all the way up to there, we're probably looking about 470 to 480 overall maximum view range. I'm going to have to redo my math on this. I am screwing up. Oh, well. We're here to have fun with this replay. Now, I'm choosing this match today because of what was pulled off. Now, the title of the video is known as The Last Stand. There's a reason for that. On El Haloof, whenever I'm playing a light tank, I like to hit this center point just because if you have decent concealment, you can get in there, have very, very little problems holding this position. Now, if you get rushed, of course, you're going to get spotted out because they're going to get close. There's a lot of foliage on the right side and where I am. Where I am is a really strong position because you had the bushes in front of you. Whenever you are firing from behind a bush, you have an increased camouflage factor because your muzzle flash is covered. And as you see, I am pulling in front of the bush, to the side of the bush, just trying to shoot through a bush. I was comfortable taking that shot to the left at that little P43 tier because I had the bushes to my right and I had a bush in front of me as well, which means the Kraft Panzer and the Tiger P were not able to spot me. Now, this match is all about stealth. On El Haloof playing a light tank, you can't go where the heavies go around A, B, 1, and 2. That is a slaughter if you go there inside of a light tank. Normally, your best bet would be try and hold out in the middle, keep everyone spotted, prevent flanking, or try and perform a flank yourself, which is what we're going to be pulling off here in a second. We're going to be taking the right path, heading up, taking the mountain, and then doing a little switch around. Now, the Type 62... I've put in quite a bit of matches inside this. The exact number being, if I can find it real quick, total of 64 with a 55% win rate. And I do have a mastery badge inside this tank. I've gotten multiple mastery badges inside this tank along with that. One top gun, three heavy calibers, a defender medal, and a scout. As expected, it is a scout tank. But so far, I, I can give this tank a very high rating. Just because the mobility... Oh, <laughs> one more thing I forgot to mention. Your engine block is gigantic. 
already broke the engine. <laughs> so you want to try and keep your range as much as possible inside this tank. But other than that, a little bit of a beast. A lot of the Chinese tanks actually are really nice. The Type 59, it is known as the Demigod on PC. I don't know what they call it on console. But fantastic. You have over 250 to 290 turret armor in some places. It, it's a fantastic tank with that T-59. Then you have the T-34-3, which is probably one of my favorite tanks in this game. However, it's shell velocity... I didn't realize what it was until maybe a few months back. And keep in mind, I've already put in like 200 plus matches inside that tank. And the second I saw what the shell velocity was, I was so surprised to realize I'm not even breaking 900. It was like 870. And there we go. Already making our first mistake against the Craft Panzer. We're shooting a rock. So, this position that I'm in. No reason to be up there, other than just to try and get up and avoid being shot at in general. There, There is some advantages. To my left, you can pull down, you can easily pop back over, get some spotting out, and then pull behind it to use it as cover. However, if you get rushed, you have not many options to fall back to, especially if they're coming from two directions. You're probably going to be taking a hit no matter what. Now, here against the Tiger P... We're just going to pull out, take a few pop shots, see what we can do with our 220 pin. I made a little bit of a mistake shooting the lower plate, especially since he's below us and we're above. Since at that angle, it's going to be a thicker plate. And I was just waiting for the Craft Panzer to pull up to start taking pop shots. And take him out of the match. Now, I'm pulling around to spot out the Craft Panther on the enemy team, letting him know that he's there. And we're not even going to try to take a shot because we already know we're going to get hit. So we just want to avoid it and wait for our team to arrive, which is the one guy. There are three of us left. Now that our Craft Panzer has finally arrived, it's time for me to join the fight. Trying to avoid hitting the front of the hall on the rocks because that can insta-kill you. And lucky for me, I took no damage on that fall. Already down to 160 health, and he is out of the match. Now, looking at the map, we have an artillery, a medium tank. I, I do believe I checked his hit points here in a second. I don't know if I did or not. I was more paying attention to where they would possibly be coming from. Oh, there it is. Checking it. As soon as I realized how much health he had left, I knew I had to get out of there. There's a T-29 in the enemy team, and he probably has the 105. I want to avoid it. Not just that, three mediums, they have decent mobility. Spotting out the Leo, I got spotted myself. Getting into a position where I have buildings covering me. Trying to get a few shots off. Now I realized I'm spotted. I need to move somewhere else. That way, if they come from anywhere, I'm capable of maneuvering back because I know there are three medium tanks now on the right side that I need to avoid. So, the bushes that I was talking about on the right side, if you take a look now, they're all over the place. For a light tank, this is a playground. Knocking down the buildings for whatever reason. Beforehand, I was thinking I might want to stay right here and provide support for him, but he wasn't coming over the hill. Now, we're down to a 1v4. And again, just going to throw this out there. What did Artillery do? He gave up on the match way too early. He drove straight off the cliff and committed suicide. Now, we're going to jump into concealment. So, at the distance that we are, we're probably about 390 to 400 meters away from a lot of these targets. And, as you can see, I was spotting them out at the maximum view range at 445. That is because their concealment rating is not high enough to cover them from my actual view range itself since I have a 390 base I'm running coated optics, vertical stabilizers, improved ventilation along with a premium consumable my view range is 
definitely exceeding the cap by a lot. So overall, I'm probably sitting around a comfortable 207, well, 470 to a 480 base view range. If you're running binoculars, it's a lot higher, but that requires you to come to a complete stop. Now, I wanted to get this video out a couple of hours ago, but whenever I got home, um, I had a uh, corrupted data for my update for the Windows. And so far, it's happened twice. I do not know what's causing it, don't know why, and I had to go through and reinstall Windows. Lucky for me, I keep all my information each time I do it. But it, it delayed me by about five hours, which I didn't want. That kind of sucked. Now, jumping back into the gameplay here, we're heading down low, just because I know that their view range is not that good, and there's a lot of bushes down there. Not just that, they know that I went to the middle and then I went back. So if you take a look, T29, he doesn't know where I am. All he knows is he spotted. I was trying to get some distance, watching the markers, trying to get past at least 490. Then I realized there's trees to my right. All right, cool. Trees also apply a camouflage value bonus. You will notice that here in a second once that T29 disappears. And right on cue, he's already out. And immediately, see the Crab Panther to my left, I'm getting a little bit of a tunnel vision here, you know. It was a 1v4, of course I'm going to have a little bit of tunnel vision. There's not really anything else I can do. Crab Panzer, look at the distance, less than 320 meters away and we're still not spotted. That's also because I'm running a Demigod crew on this. Demigod crew, meaning that I have over 15 perks. On this tank right now, it is a dedicated concealment and dedicated spotter. And we are looking at a total of 13 perks in this crew. Starting off, I run Recon, Situational Awareness, Muffled Shot, Green Thumb, Camouflage, Silent Driving. I don't need Silent Driving on light tanks because Silent Driving is for your Camouflage rating in heavies and mediums. Medium tanks, they get a drop off for the Camouflage rating but running silent driving actually cuts that in half. So let's say you have a 20 and you drop down to 10 during the time that you are moving. Silent driving kicks in. All of a sudden, rather than dropping down to 10, you only drop down to 15. It is a very big advantage, especially on some mediums. Pulling up to the right side here, we got a couple more bushes in front of us that we're using to cover us to make an advance of play. Using our view range and our concealment to our advantage. Now, they know where I was on that left side. They're not going to be expecting me to come up from behind them. And a moment right here, I panicked. That shot went high. <laughs> there was the five degree. In the Five degrees of gun depression at work that made me freak out but in the end two shells two kills stand alone against four the last stand the type 62 if you don't have this tank I recommend to get it just because of what it's capable of we pull out a high caliber metal we got a mastery badge and not even worried about the mark. And there's Devastator and Top Gun. Devastator inside of a light tank, especially in a 1v4. That, too bad it wasn't a fifth kill. Because Kalibanov's medal. Oh, and right on cue. <laughs> I laughed so hard when that popped up. Alrighty. Well, you know what? That was a great match. Tomorrow I plan on getting the E75 out, keep in mind, uh, Mountain Eastern Time, possibly 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock it should be uploaded. If it is not, I might have had another Windows there. But, until then, you guys have a wonderful day, and keep in mind, I was monologuing like a motherfo today. Because, uh, you know, you get home, you expect to be able to put out your video immediately to try and keep up what you've been doing which is daily uploads and then to realize your computer just took a complete and utter crap 
Now, I run with an NVIDIA graphics card, the 1660 Super, keep in mind, fantastic graphics card, especially whenever you're using OBS. You are capable of using your graphics card to process everything. So rather than using CPU, use your GPU. Alrighty, so the intro. No, the the intro? Or yeah, the end? Yeah, whatever. You guys have a great day. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I will try my best to reply.